I got a phone call, and so did Bob Willis from Mike Really. And uh, Breers rang me, and he said, look, Beefy said, do you want to play in this game at Edinburgh? I said, of course I do. And he rang Bob and said to Bob, Bob, uh, you're not playing for uh, Warwickshire in this game? He said, no, I'm not, because I want to sort out that no ball problem. Uh, and I want to play in the Edinburgh game. So Breers said straight away to both of us, fine, bang, bang, both of us are in the squad. We get up there, Edinburgh. I'm stood by the nets. I hate to say I'm stood by the nets. I'm not in the nets. Just far enough away so that I'm safe because it's not going to come over the top. Hated nets. And Brutus came up to me and said, Dan, he said, Bob, he said, I think you're going to get, I think you're going to get uh, 100 runs and uh, 10 wickets in this game. I said, well, that'd be nice. I hope you're right. And uh, he wasn't far off. We went out and uh, played. It was a bloody awful wicket, to be honest. Um, it was a Keith Boys special. That's better. Now I can hear. Keith Boys special, and um, it, it got worse as the game went on. Normally, at Headingley, it starts a bit lively and then flattens. This just got worse and worse and more uneven. Anyway, we got a few runs. The Australians got a big score first up, 400 and odd, which they shouldn't have got. And then we were rolled out and made to follow on. And we went out there and we thought, well, you know, we've got to play, boys. There's nothing else we can do. There's no point in having discussions and meetings. We need to score runs. And we went out there and we lost a couple of wickets. And I think it was about 60 for four or five when I went in. And went out there and I thought, just to play, just play. It wasn't a great wicket and a couple did strange things. So I thought, well, this up. I'm going to have a go at it. If it's short, I'm going to have a go at it. And if it's a good length and swing in, I'll hope I'll hopefully miss it. And that was basically my, my mindset was to be positive. Started to get a few runs. They lost another couple of weeks. And Graham Dilly came in. And uh, Graham sadly no longer with us. He said, uh, what to me? He said, what do you want me to do? I said, enjoy. I said, smash it. If it's there, hit it hard. Don't get out nibbling around. If you're going to get out, get out and make them work for it. And he went out and got his highest, I think, first class score. His easily his highest test match score. And he looked like Graham Pollock out there. He stood and just smashed it on the up. 50 odd. That knocked a wind out of the sails a little bit for the Aussies. So I carried on. Picker got 50 odd. We got runs. Then Chris uh, Old came in. He's hung around with me. And eventually, you know, okay, it's not a big total, but um, 130 on that pitch. He felt if we got if we bowled well, we got a good chance. So we go out there, we uh, played out the rest of the Saturday, nothing much happened. And then Sunday is rest day. Now that's how test cricket should be played. <laughs> Brilliant, because both sides get on the lash, have a chat, sort things out. And, but we had a history of a barbecue in uh, little old sleepy Epworth in North Lincolnshire. So we used to put a marquee up on the lawn, the Australian boys would come over, and they were more than happy to come over this year because they thought the game was won. So they turned up, and you could see the people of Epworth. This bloody great bus comes with four X's all over it, Castle Main, and it opens up and the boys come down, all with a slab of beer, down the steps, up the driveway, beer in the marquee, the party begun. Anyway, everyone thinks that Bob Willis is bowling. Yeah, it had a part to play, a big part to play, but the rug rugby scrum at 3 a.m. <laughs> on Sunday morning was where the test match was won. <laughs> we're in the marquee, we're there, and it starts. We've got an advantage. We've got Michael William Gatty. <laughs> he is the whole of our front row. <laughs> and we eventually, we, pu we push him back, and the, you, you were pushed back when you hit the canvas. They hit the canvas, we won. They were so demoralised, the Australians. They'd never lost it before. And anyway, we got the pitch on Monday. Actually, I think we had lunch in the Queen's Arms on Sunday after 3 a.m. Yeah, so not a lot of sleep. And then we went back to the hotel. And next, uh, next day, we're at the ground. And the game starts to unfold. They're 50 for one, chasing 130. And Bob Willis turned around to Mike Brady and said, Captain, I'd like to come down the hill with the wind, where Beefy's been bowling, rather than running up the hill and into the wind, and I'm the quickest bowler. Yes, good point, Bob. Anyway, he bowled 15.4 overs, down that slope, not one single no ball, and got eight for 43.
unbelievable piece of sustained quick bowling. Uh, sadly not here to celebrate the 40th with us. It's very sad uh, his passing away just over a year ago. But um, I will always remember that because when he bowled, he was so in his own space, or what they, whatever they want to call it. What's the terminology now in the England dressing room? The bubble, or I'm in the whatever, yeah. Anyway, load of bollocks. But <laughs> he's, uh, he's at the end of his run and he comes steaming in and he'd, he'd be focused on the batsman. And then if he got a wicket, which he did quite often, eight times, he gets the wicket and he, all he did was go and then turn and start walking back to the mark. And you, you, you can talk to him. You know, I'm his best mate and I'm saying, well, bold, Bob. And I just get these two eyes looking at me like a bloody great white shark. And off he goes back up there. And the Australian batsmen, without doubt, were intimidated by this. And he came steaming in, no, no balls, won the game, sprinted off the field, this is where the real fun started. We've won the game against the odds. So we're in the dressing room. We thought we'd have a glass of champagne to celebrate. We could only have a glass each because most of us were shooting off to play in the Nat West or wherever it was on Wednesday, the quarterfinals. So we shoot, go in there, go get a glass of champagne, boys. We should have one glass. There isn't any. Where is it? It's all in the Australian dressing room in the back. So we had this young guy over from South Africa who was um, over on a work experience. <laughs> he experienced a lot in that week, but a work experience. You know, I used to go out with the boys and come back the next day about an hour before the rest of them, but still had the same clothes on, which is a bit of a giveaway, really. But anyway, we came back and uh, we sat there and look at Ricky, and his name is Ricky Roberts, if that means anything to anyone in the room. But Ricky, I said to him, Ricky, come here. Just go over there to the old heading room dressing rooms, the doors, Corridors like that, they're in there, we're in here. And uh, knocked on the door, I said, tell him, knock on the door, ask if we can have some champagne. So Ricky goes over there, knocks on the door. Hey, listen, chaps, you guys don't need this, eh? <laughs> can the English boys have some champagne? Jesus Christ. The next thing, he comes horizontal, <laughs> like a missile through our door, and I could see Rod Marsh and Ray Bright. All I could see, obviously, what they've just done. Anyway, Ricky Roberts, and we're going to take credit for this, went on to be, does anyone know Ricky Roberts? Should do, he lives up here, half the year. He actually carried for Ernie Els to all his major wins. And it's all down to really me sending him through that door, I think. <laughs> but, but, uh, but yeah, then the heading, uh, Edgerton game was a game, a game that we pulled out of the fire. Uh, the crowd won us a lot of uh, those wickets, they were, it's not called you know, the bull ring for any for no reason. It was it was an amazing atmosphere. Then the best best game of the lot from my point of view was Old Trafford. Uh, to take on Dennis Lilly with that second new ball in that uh, our set the first innings and set up the second innings rather set up the total. Um, I'll never forget that. And to do to, to take on and hammer someone like Dennis Lilly um, three times into the railway station, once down the ground. And he didn't speak to me for about a month, but um, he's one of the greats of all time. And to beat him and the other players out in that team, Border emerged, all these players, some really great players. So it was, it was an amazing um, 81 series. It changed my life and it changed the lives of the people in the country because if you remember, we had the race riots, we had the minor strike, the country was in turmoil and, and that suddenly gave everyone we actually stopped Glasgow City Centre, Glasgow City Centre, stopped because everyone was watching it on televisions. Obviously it was in Glasgow because you can look through the screens and you have to pay. It's free. The Scots are quite fond of that. But, um, but no, we, their, their parliament stopped. Uh, it, it was an amazing moment and to be part of it uh, was very special. And the celebrations have been really nice. We've done the four dinners. And we've got the final one coming up in a week or so's time at Old Trafford. But to meet up with the guys who are still with us, and they all come along, and you catch up, and some of them we haven't seen for years and years. So it's it's, it's been pretty emotional and very tiring. Yeah, you mentioned you mentioned.